This is Talking Voiceovers, interviewing the industry professionals with your host, Gail Goslin. Today's guest is Lucas the Voice. Welcome to Talking Voiceovers, Lucas. It's nice to have you here. Can you tell us where you grew up and how you became that deep voice guy? Well, I grew up in South Africa. There's a township by the name of Sibuki. Now, we located to a place called Johandio in the early 90s. And that's where I spent most of my time, my childhood. That's where I went to school. And to become this deep voice guy, he started when I was 13 years old. Uh, we were just in a classroom. I was in grade eight back then. And one of my classmates realized that, you know what, your voice is starting to be more deeper. And I was so ashamed of myself. My parents even thought that I started smoking, even the teachers at school. They kept on checking up on me time to time, but... It became just a deep voice and I started being recruited to join a choir. We started doing poetry sessions and all. I never thought of becoming a voiceover artist. Uh, it just um, happened in 2050 when somebody in Santin happened to be so influential within the agencies that manage voiceover artists. We passed each other in the bank and as we were passing each other, she had my voice and I was talking over the phone. She immediately screamed and was like, wow, is that your natural voice? I said, yeah. Yes, it is. So, you know what? We really need to talk. Let me have your numbers. We exchange details. Buddy, 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 buddy. The following day, she invited me to a, a studio in Santin, Princeton, Sony Vision. That's where I was given the scripts, and that's when I did the recording, signed out of West Bank, and the rest is tasty. What a fabulous story. So you were found, you were discovered. Did you have formal training after that, or did you just start working straight away? Well, training, I cannot just say it was a formal training. It was just me being explained to the differences when it comes to delivery styles. Because I didn't know what voiceovers were. I just had adverts on TV playing when I'm watching television. And at some point, I thought those voices were not real. I just thought maybe they were programmed using a certain software or something. So I didn't have a clue what voiceovers were. So they had to explain to me that there's something called the hard sell. This is where you must go high. There's something called soft sell and intimate. This is where you will do the best because you have a deeper voice. So when you do a soft sell or intimate, that's where you go deeper. Maybe you're advertising a whiskey or a car or and then they say there's something called movie trailers coming soon in cinema and that's where i got most of my work in available soon uh, streaming on netflix next on discovery all that and they just had to talk to teach me how to voice different styles of delivery and what is in this advert what is corporate what is intimate and what is the commercials all those things they had to explain that to me in detail in a proper context and that's when i then got perfected within the voice of industry and since then i voiced thrillers animation audio books uh, and narrated documentaries i did tv and radio announcements i also the poetry reading i've joined fiverr did hundreds of projects for people around the world via fiverr I was under an agency, but we parted ways because now we, we just couldn't agree in certain terms and conditions. But I utilized the opportunity to build a home setup, which is where I managed to buy recording equipment, uh, decent microphones, decent headphones, and had my own space at home. Just chose one single small room. It doesn't have to be big. Just And I did it. Uh, I, I transformed it into my vocal booth. So that's where I've been working from last day until now. There was a time when I felt like there could be somebody assisting me, but I had no one back then until somebody had my voice from somewhere. So I know the pain. That's why I'm bringing back to the community. I used to, and I'm saying this for the first time, people who are watching this will be hearing this for the first time. I used to walk 15 kilometers and again 15 kilometers just to go and catch a train so that I can go where I'll be able to catch Wi-Fi for free in order for me to check my emails, uh, in order for me to check if somebody has contacted me via Fiverr, in order to check if maybe somebody via Voice Bank has decided to hire me. I used to do that. I used to walk 30 kilometers every day just to go and connect to a free Wi-Fi in town. So imagine you don't have food, you wake up in the morning, you walk 15 kilometers, you wait for a train because you only have seven rand to buy a ticket. And uh, once you buy a train ticket, you then go catch Wi-Fi and then find that there's nothing. No one has contacted you. And this thing happened for the whole year until uh, I managed to save some funds uh, 
did certain small jobs, fixing cell phones for people, uh, computer problems for people. And I then started to afford to buy myself a decent microphone, uh, decent headphones, uh, a decent cell phone, because back then I didn't have a proper cell phone where I can even have this Zoom platform. That's how everything started. So I'm saying to people, you need to be patient and consistent because if you are not consistent, it means you are not into this. Be consistent. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Do not be discouraged by life because things are happening or developing slow. When things delay in life, it doesn't necessarily mean they are not meant to happen. They are delaying because you are meant to go through a certain experience that will build you and perfect you and develop you for whatever the foundation you are building will come with. So that's what I can say to the people. That is profound and very important indeed. So can you tell us more about your home studio and all the equipment that you have? I have an RVBX20 microphone. It's a, it's a condenser microphone. Uh, it has phantom power built in. I also have a dynamic broadcasting microphone because uh, it has this ability not to pick up background noise as compared to a condenser microphone. And I have studio monitors that I use as my headphones. I have three computers. Each one of them displays three screens. So if here I'm opening my script, here I can open my DAW. Here I can open, uh, if I'm having a client from somewhere, I can open uh, that person via Skype or via Source Connect or whatever platform we're utilizing to communicate online. It's just a decent setup. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be massive. You just have to do the work. So for somebody who's starting out, it's not it's not that much of an expensive investment. You can start off with something no, no, simple. No. No, it's not. Just just get yourself a decent laptop, not a noisy one, because sometimes our microphones can pick up the background noise. It's not only a car hooting outside or children screaming within the neighborhood. It can pick up a fan sound. So you have these, these noisy computers with a fan, so your microphone can pick that up. So it just has to be a quiet laptop, not expensive, or a quiet uh, PC tower connected to a good display screen. Get yourself some decent headphones so that you can hear back to whatever you are saying. Sometimes headphones are useful, sometimes are useless. Because sometimes when you are using headphones, because they have their own volume setups together with what volume setups in your laptop are. Now, when you speak from your microphone, listening to yourself, because they have their own volume, they will sometimes make you think you sound loud and you will slowly lower your voice without noticing because in your ears, your headphones are saying to you, dude, you are so loud. Now, you lower your voice without realizing that what is being recorded is what goes to the microphone not what you hear here so sometimes they may be misleading so when i i just use them to check up my levels that there's no something being picked up on the background like maybe beds or a washing machine or car hooting or people passing by and once i check that there's no zzz on the background or anything of that nature. My voice is fine. My levels are okay. I immediately drop them and I voice whatever that I have to voice naturally facing the script, standing in front of a microphone. Then I listen back to whatever I recorded when I'm done. When I now have to do the editing part, the mastering part, putting your compression and all that. If they provided background music that you must include in your project because like if I can say to you, we are advertising something horrific and I stand in front of a microphone without background music and go like, something is coming, something big. It won't be so exciting. But when you hear those, boom, something is coming, boom, something big. So yeah, they sometimes provide that background music or sometimes they say, can you please produce that to us? And I do that. Come soon in cinema. Such things without you trying to sound like somebody or trying to sound electronic or digital. It has to be your natural voice. That's the experience that I've been going through since uh, we've been under lockdown. Did you teach yourself your video editing and the sound engineering or did you have mentorship? Well, I, I was I grew up as this computer guy from high school level. And you know, when you are a young boy at the age of 13, 12, 14, you are interested in cars, magazines, video games, all that. So 
immediately when they bought me my first computer. Back then we had Pentium 3, Windows XP, something like that. Now there's Windows 10, there's i7 core and all that. So back then I was just interested when I stood in front of the computer. It's either I'm doing my schoolwork typing or I'm into video games, watching movies. Uh, and I didn't realize that, you know what, the way I love music, let me teach myself how to edit and produce sounds. So I used YouTube tutorials and they linked me to where I can download softwares, mm -hmm. uh, your effort studio, which is what I'm best at. I didn't know anything about Adobe Audition back then. It was effort studio. Um, I used Pro Tools, uh, Cubase, Resin, Logic Pro. Um, there's this other one called Presonus Studio One. I really loved it back then so that's how i learned how to do music any kind you deep house your hip-hop and all that until i learned piano chords so i can do the background cinematic epic music in the background by playing just the chords it's just strings and drums that's all that's what is needed mm. and there, there must be a dramatic ending you you must say something from the lower note you you, you start to voice and you go with it Pacey, pacey. And now it goes up until that last moment, like, <clears throat> available soon in cinemas now. And I said, oh, you know what? I really love this. Let me just do it. And that's when I felt so much love with movie trailers. And you do all this from home. So how did you treat the room where you do your recording? Do you have a, a soundproof booth or is it just the walls that are treated? You built it yourself. When, when I started, it was a table setup, like a small table setup, two screens. And I had to hide my PC tower because it has a noisy fan. I had to put it somewhere the other side of the of the house, then the next room. So I had to drill a hole between my bedroom and the room where I'm recording so that I can put a cable for displaying purposes and power purposes so that this PC cannot be picked by my microphone. Until, uh, because there's a window in that room, until I had children screaming in the background. And I felt like, you know what? My clients won't accept this. I need to do something. Now, I took planks water planks because I have this L position within the room. So I just had to utilize this site, cover it with a water plank and covered with soundproofs all over. And after doing that, everything started working fine from my side. Do you find that you have to stop a lot for cars hooting and children screaming or do you prefer to work at night? You know what, what happens when you learn about DAWs? digital audio working stations, audition, your effort studios and all that. There are certain things that are called plugins. Now, these plugins, you'll find something called a noise gate or noise remover. Mm -hmm. And because my, my microphone, I had to buy what is called a microphone preamp. So my microphone is connected to a preamp that has a noise gate. It only captures what is two centimeter from the microphone. Even if you can shout uh, on the other side of the room, my microphone won't pick you up. So if the noise gate is on, it picks up what is two centimeter away from the microphone. If it's off, it can pick up background noise, uh, cars outside, children screaming and all that. So I had to buy this DRBX20 preamp microphone processor and it's working so fine for me. If I can still hear background noise, there's something called noise gate. It's, it's a plugin that you install in your DAW. You can pick up where there's background noise in your vocals or your audio and you remove it so that only your voice is heard. Not uh, chickens outside, not people shouting each other outside, not car hooty, no children like people open doors and all that. No, only your voice. And also did a video tutorial on that on how you can do it. So you can find a lot of information on YouTube to teach yourself. Yeah, indeed. We, with YouTube, there's everything. There's everything. And uh, you must also follow people who are, who've been in this industry for years. People who do this on a daily basis uh, as their full-time job. Listen to how they, they deliver. If you're watching TV, listen to the commercials. If you are watching a soapy, uh, for some reason, it goes to play commercials or adverts, you call them. Don't tell the television over. Listen to the commercials. That's your craft. That's your craft. And it, it has to do, again, with practicing. You must practice time to time. 
what helps me is to read every day and I read aloud. I read aloud. I take up books, read aloud. If there are children in the house, I read them stories. And you don't just read something with one voice. You, you play characters, play different characters. If this is a father's story, you go deep. If this is a child speaking, go low and pride. Make it interesting. In that way, you train yourself. You train yourself. It's like saying, and the little pig came towards the door and started knocking. Who is it? It's your daddy. You don't sound like my daddy. Honey, is that you? Yes, sweetheart, it is me. Open the door. No, do not open the door. Something is so scary. Something like that. And children are here, they'll be laughing and all that. In that way, you practice yourself. You can then start to audition for voice acting jobs, as I did animation, video trailers. But I do get uh, gigs on Fiverr that are saying we need a voice that can do this, that can do that. Because they explain on the script what is it that they want. And to me, this is such an incredible way of making a living. It certainly is. But now there are discussions about Fiverr with mm -hmm. regards to the rates that one can charge on Fiverr. I'm sure you've heard about it. Mm -hmm. People would say that you're not charging enough on Fiverr and maybe uh, you're selling yourself cheaply. Do you find that you can make a good mm -hmm. living on Fiverr? What is your opinion? Well, for every successful business, there is a starting point. Somebody starts a tech shop of few packets of biscuits. That person ends up owning a supermarket. So you might start at $5 per 50 ways on Fiverr. Mm -hmm. But once you have made your name within the website itself, you will then start to charge $150 per 50 ways. So for every business that is successful, there is a starting point. So I do make a good living out of Fiverr. And sometimes you get small jobs. Sometimes you get bigger jobs. Some, some, somebody will email me 500 ways to say, you know what, we need you to voice this and I'll charge uh, $300 for 500 weights and they will pay. So as of when I was studying, which is two years back, I started at $5 per 50 weights. And as I kept on getting lines, uh, delivering on time, that's when I, I felt like, you know what, maybe it's time for me to now raise my prices a little. Yeah. That's really putting it well, because it's important for new people to understand that they can't start charging mm -hmm. big prices for when they're just starting out and they don't have any reviews or much experience. So, this is my point. This is my point. What other platforms do you use besides Fiverr online? There's Voiva, there's Fiverr, there's Voices.com, but Voices.com, it needs some subscription fee for you to join it. What I also used to do on Instagram and Twitter, you have big companies who have Instagram accounts, your BMW, uh, your Samsung, your iPhone, whatever the case may be. Now, I will do a sample as a picture video and do a voiceover regarding any project. It can be BMW and all that. And go and tag them on my Instagram account or on my Twitter account as a sample because nobody will harm you or take you to court for advertising their product for free. No one in the world will do that. So as I did that, uh, two weeks down the line, I'll receive a call. Hey, man, we loved what you did with our project on Twitter or Instagram. We would love to utilize your voice for our next promo. This, these are the details, buddy, 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 buddy. And this is the studio that we booked you for. Be there at 10 a.m. on Monday. And here's the script. Our production company that uh, that is responsible for our creatives will direct you from now. That's how I managed to get certain gigs and via an agency, via me marketing myself on social media platforms so via Fiverr, Voices.com, and Voiva as well. Even under Voice Bank, the, I, I managed to get certain gigs under Voice Bank, but it was back then. Certain production companies that I worked with that are responsible for creatives for certain companies because uh, people think Nando's hires you as a voiceover artist directly. No, it doesn't. Nando's has its own production company that is responsible for its creatives, video creatives or visual, whatever, that are displayed in their adverts. That production company gets a budget from Nando's. Now, within that budget, it must hire a voiceover artist. It must hire a studio director. It must hire 
a lot of people who will be responsible for the creatives or the videos that will be presented via television or via the internet as whatever they are selling or whatever they are promoting. So you'll find that the same company that is working for Nando's works also for Mercedes-Benz. It works also again for BMW, Samsung, and all that. And once it has received the same job from Samsung to say we need a deep male voiceover artist who can do X, Y, Z for us or 8, 9, 10 for us, they'll then say, but we once worked with this other guy when we did an advert for the new spare meal or KFC or Nivea body lotion. Maybe even for this, we can utilize it. So you get a call again for something different, but from the same production company. So you just have to impress people when you are working. So you start to become well-known and then they come back and get you all the time. Do you usually get those jobs on your own or exactly. would you rather go through an agent for that? Well, for somebody who study, I always recommend this. Get an agent. People don't understand. An agent or an agency is not only there to take 20% of your salary or 10% of your salary. They have contacts. They know who to send your CVs to. They know who to email your clips or your voice reels to. They know how to negotiate deals for you. They know how to recommend you. And agents, on the other hand, they are contacted by production companies that are hired by certain companies to do their creatives. So if, for instance, Paramount Films or New Light Cinema or Warner Bros. or 20th Century works with me as a production company, I will know which voiceover agencies are existing in South Africa. Now I can contact them one by one to say, I'm looking for a deep voice, somebody who will sound a little bit deep, somebody who will sound bright, and somebody who will manage to voice this trailer for us. Immediately, I do that. They will then recommend somebody within their within their books and say, we recommend this person. This is the clip that he did. Or here are his demos. Maybe you can utilize it. And from then, that's when I will email a script and we start working. So uh, I will say agencies and agents are very important in that regard. So, so somebody who's a newbie or wannabe, I recommend you get an agent or an agency. But now, not just anybody can get an agent. You don't want somebody who's never done a voiceover before to, to mm. start contacting agents and then agents yeah. are just going to be flooded with mm -hmm. new people so you have exactly. to know what you're doing before you can actually consider yourself good enough to go to an agent wouldn't you say exactly well what happened with me i got 50 contacts i contacted one of each one of them one by one and i was given an opportunity by only three out of 50 all these ones told me, have you done some training? Have you done some voiceovers for about five years? And I said, no, I'm a newcomer in this industry, seeking an opportunity. So what you must do, record your voice reels professionally. What we are doing now is recording this video, utilizing a cell phone microphone, which is absolutely not going to give us a, a good audio quality. But for somebody who's seeking audition or seeking exposure or seeking an opportunity, to be signed by an agent. Save some money for some weeks, some months, until you can afford to go to a professional studio and record your voice professionally. Then take your clips, do some training, contact agents one by one to say, I've done some training, I've done some demos, here are my clips, I can email them to them so that you can have a listen. And you might be lucky if you know what you are doing. And if you are so talented, you might be lucky. I was lucky because uh, somebody told me that deeper voices are in high demand and all that. I can say that's how I was lucky. For the fact that uh, I didn't go to an audition, I didn't submit clips to some agents or whatever. I was discovered first by somebody who's in the executive of some Asian back then who had my voice and said, you know what, we need to sign you in. You can actually do this. And that's how everything started. So for voiceover newbies and wannabes, get an agent. Do some training. Don't only train when you go and meet whoever was training you. Practice also by yourself. When you're at home, read books aloud. Instead of sitting on your couch uh, watching omnibus of soapies for the whole day, go to a room and record. Go to a room and read. Go to a room and practice and believe that one day you're going to become somebody and keep on trying.
And do not try to sound like someone. Don't ever do that. You must be honest in this industry because uh, speaking of honesty, if you don't mind, somebody will know me via social media and will get links to my website or whatever platform where my clips are. And because that person has a little bit of deeper voice that can be heard via a telephone, he will therefore use my own clips to audition for a job. Now, I'm saying this because you must be honest in this industry. If you don't have a deeper voice, don't try and put effects when you're recording your voice. Don't try to edit it or utilize the certain softwares because when a director hears that or a client hears that, they will say, wow, that's an incredible voice. And then they hire you. Now, when they hire you, now get to a studio. When you get there, because you emailed the voice reels or your voice clips, edited ones, where you used softwares to sound like Lucas, they will then say, wow, all of the sounding, you sound like Donald Duck. <laughs> you see, you can't produce it naturally. What you are hearing now, and they are like, no, 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 no. We want that deeper voice. This is not what you sent to us as a voice read. You can't produce it naturally. What you are hearing now is my natural voice. I can speak like this for 24 hours, for two days, uh, for the whole week without uh, experiencing any problem. Because uh, when I say somebody or people must be natural when it comes to voicing whatever, some some jobs are big. You won't just show up in in studio and do a 30 second voice over for whatever project it may be. Some you might be hired to do something that will take you an hour. You might be hired to voice a National Geographic documentary about animals. It's going to be a four hours job. So if you are faking to have a deeper voice and be like, yeah, yeah, I can talk like Lucas, yeah, I'm going to do it. Ten minutes later, you are in trouble. So get used to your own voice. Be unique to yourself and read. Get used to the language. Know which ways to emphasize. Know where to pause. Know where to sound dramatic. Know which ways to sustain. And this has to do with the script. Because sometimes in this industry, you don't get a script two weeks ahead or a week ahead or three days ahead. You get a script when you get to the studio. If you are recording at 11, when you get there at five minutes before 11, as you are walking inside the booth, that's when they hand over the script to say, hi, Lucas, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what you'll be doing for us today. And because you're not used to reading time to time, you'll be disappointed. And you know what's going to happen? They'll never use you again. So read, they get used to the language. And in that way, you will get more, more clients, you will get more jobs, and people will even recommend you to the next person. And that's important for your reputation because once you've mm -hmm. messed it up, you're <laughs> never going to work again. Everybody knows everyone. Yes. That is a very good piece it's of advice. my point. Yeah. So, yes, confidence is what builds you. Confidence builds you. That's what I'm saying. You must be confident in what you are doing because confidence doesn't make you a fantastic voiceover artist. Confidence prepares you to be ready for any situation. Because sometimes I will fly to Cape Town, Milestone Studio. These people will book a plane ticket for me. They will pay accommodation for me. And in my mind, I would think, wow, I'm going to be voicing something big. This is why these people treat me this way. When I get there, there's no script and I'm five minutes from recording. You will think, uh, because you're not confident enough, you won't be able to master your art. So when I get to a studio, I even talk back to the microphone, entertain the director or entertain the sound engineer because you must be confident in whatever you're doing. Confidence doesn't make you fantastic, but it prepares you for any situation. Sometimes we get bigger scripts and if you're not confident, you won't make it. Sometimes you don't even get a script like three days ago. I went to this studio and they didn't have a script for me. When I got there, after traveling about 200 uh, kilometers to get there, my script is only three lines. Only three lines. These people paid for my transport and for my accommodation and all that. They even bought me lunch. So I thought, ah, I'm going to spend the whole day here. When I get there, three lines available in stores now. Thanks, Lucas. And that's it. I was like, <laughs> wow. So I traveled so far just to say available in stores now. That's it. <laughs> and so you, you just have to be prepared for any situation. Learn how to play around with your voice. Learn how to go deep. Learn how to go high. Learn how to be funny. Learn how to be sexy. Learn how to 
breit. Some scripts want, like the tickler.com, there's a friend of mine by the name of Rampem Bemohosho. He's the one who's been doing the recent KFC adverts. All of them you've been seeing from December till now. He's the one who's been doing it. So they they hire him because he's one of the best art sellers in this country. So that's what I'm saying. You must be able to do multiple characters because if I only had coming soon, I was not going to work because uh, I'm self-centered. So you must have multiple voices. You must know how to play around with your voice. And in that way, people can then hire you for different characters. Same applies with somebody who wants to upload their voice reels or should I say their demos on a website. Don't just record movie trailer demos. Also try conversational adverts. Also try corporate adverts and upload them. Different styles of delivery. Upload them on a website or whatever platform you joined to market yourself or to seek an opportunity so that people can say, if we don't want to use this person for a movie trailer, but we can also use him for a video game. We can also use this person for retail stores, commercials and all that. And they can see that if we invest in this person, we invest in an art, not only in the person. Also, you can see if somebody has got lots of different reels that they've done a lot of work, even on their own, but they've mm-hmm. got passion and they're trying and they're really putting everything in there. If you've only got one reel, then okay, one guy. And then one, and then one. It's like recording something and then send it only to your friends. That's the point. Only you, your friends and your family will know that you are talented. Yeah. Only the five of you. So it takes no a lot else. of work. So record your stuff. It takes a lot of work. People think being a voiceover artist is just standing and reading something from the script. Next on ABC News or uh, Scandal, Monday to Friday at 7.30 p.m. No, 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 no. It needs creativeness. You must be creative because sometimes if you don't know what you are doing, you will get to a studio and record something and get recording fee or performance fee. Now, a month down the line, you will then listen to, or maybe you are watching TV, and you hear the same advert that you voiced being played on TV, but it's not you missing it. You know why? They used somebody. Immediately you walked out of the studio, they just said, hey, let's, let's just pay him for his five minutes of being here, but we're not going to use this person. He doesn't know what he's doing. So you must be up on your game. You must be prepared for anything. And the most important tool when it comes to voiceovers, do it because you love it. Love what you do and do what you love. Absolutely. Love what you do and do what you love. Because every time you get an opportunity to voice whatever. You'll be so excited to perform whatever the script may be. So once you love what you do, you'll keep on doing what you love. Focus on what you are perfect in. Concentrate on what you are best at and do what you master most. And then everything will come to you. That is excellent advice. I completely agree with that. If somebody would like to chat with you, where can they find you? Uh, Four platforms. One is uh, YouTube is just Lucas The Voice. Instagram, Lucas The Voice. Twitter, Lucas The Voice. Facebook, Lucas The Voice. Just Lucas The Voice. D-A Voice. That's how you'll find me. You also do radio show. I've, I've seen that you have a little radio channel. I have an audio, an online radio platform. It is 24 hours, uh, but uh, because I can't speak alone for 24 hours, sometimes I, I select my playlists and jingles and all that so that they can play me for at least 16 hours. And then I'll choose six hours for me to speak, do a podcast, and host people online. Others come and drop by in the studio. We have a discussion about whatever the case may be. So it is zeno.fm forward slash Lucas. The voice. That's where you can find me as a radio host, uh, as a radio DJ and all that. So I do radio as well. And I can do radio from home uh, because it's an online platform. Logins and streaming uh, details are always with me. I can travel with my equipment anywhere in the world and host the show. Tune in, make a comment on WhatsApp, I will mention you. Make a comment on Instagram, I will mention you. Well, thank you very much, Lucas. It was super interesting today. Indeed.